Hey guys, just wanted to do a quick uh, update on things I got going on. I want to do a 6R80 swap behind a small block Ford. So this is going to show some of the stuff I've picked up, some of the ideas I have going on, and uh, see if we can get that figured out. All right. So on the left, 6R80. On the right is your standard 4R70W. This one is a small block Ford pattern. Two starter bolts, six bolt, two dowel pin type. So on the left, I have the mod motor, six bolt pattern. Well, maybe seven, depending on how you count it up. So they like to use the dowel pins as a mounting point, where on the small block, the dowel pins are just exactly that. Just dowel pins with bolts top and bottom and your top. So what's funny is the spread here and the distance from the bolts to the center of the crank are the same on both small block Ford and a mod motor. And the dowel pins also line up exactly the same. So I have here is a 60s era 157 tooth starter spacer plate. And you'll see the top holes line up. Top holes line up. Dowel pins line up. And this bell housing bolt here lines up. Which is pretty amazing. So, the idea is you can draw up the pattern, add in the starter spacer, the starter location for a small Ford, and capture this bolt down here. And you come up with a way to hang a starter, cut out the excess aluminum, and reuse the dowel pins, the top ones on each side, and should be able to make an adapter plate, like a 3 8 inch thick aluminum adapter plate to take you from that to this and stick it behind a small block fort. So if you're wondering about size, the 6R80 is about six inches shorter, but is a little bit taller and a little bit fatter in some areas. This happens to be a this happens to be a 2013 out of a pickup truck, two-wheel drive, as the tag says. So this one does not have the transmission controller inside, so it has just a standard plug on the back. And ideally, there's just uh, five solenoids for gear selection, and then you have a torque converter lockup and a line pressure. So, uh, there's plenty of documentation out there on the logic on driving the solenoids in the right order to get you the right gear. It's a little bit different than the 4R where you really don't care about which clutch is engaging, which pack and bands are doing whatever they're doing to get you your one through four. Um, that was all controlled hydraulically. Um, you just toggle your shift solenoids to to get the gear you want. But with the 6R, the documentation I've been finding is you actually need to know which clutch pack to engage or disengage to get you the correct gear ratio you want. So the 6R80 does not have bands inside. It's all clutch to clutch and with planetary gears in between each clutch pack set. So uh, you are able to do an internal trans brake by engaging different clutch packs together that would not normally be and that tends to lock up the internals so I believe there's guys out there running making trans brakes which is just an electronic way to uh, lock up the inner guts of the tranny and um, so I'm looking forward to maybe playing with that. So the intent there we go. the intent is to do the same thing with the MS3 code, 
go ahead and add the tranny controller into the Megasquirt 3 firmware so I can drive it directly from my engine controller instead of having to use a separate box. This does have quite a few extra I.O. that I have to sort out, but I think I found a way to modify the MS3 hardware to free up two extra pins that you would normally not have as a digital outs or software PWM outs. And that's the other thing I need to sort out. Ford claims that they're PWMing all the solenoids except for one as an on-off. So I need to figure out if that's for current reasons or if that's to, uh, to actually control the way the shift happens. I really don't care about the shifts being too terribly soft or smooth. I just need them to happen. So we'll see what happens. I have to scrounge up some other hardware. Oh, I'm cutting my head off. Scrounge up some other hardware, some X for three hardware, and then modify the boards and, or a daughter board and see if I can break out two extra channels and then add that in the software or in the firmware side. And then I've already added to the GUI the INI file to allow you to select which line is tied to which solenoid pack. So that's where I'm at on this. Um, we'll see how this turns out. See you guys later. Bye.